husband and I, we were married 10 years and uh, yeah, we were, we were lucky um, yeah, having Maren. At that time, he was most of the time like the mom for Maren, so because I was full-time working, so they had actually a pretty close relationship, a very good relationship. So he took her to school, he, he took care of um, that the homework is done. Yeah, he was the one doing the grocery shopping and cooking. And he, he just did a lot. And it was, it was very hard when he passed away. Every Sunday morning, we would watch um, race cars together. Um, I liked it when he goes in the pool because he does the biggest cannonballs. I liked um, sometimes when my mom was too busy to do stuff, he would go some places with me. So he had texted his uh, psychotherapist and um, he understood directly what was going on. And he had called the police to check on him for a well wellness check. But the police, uh, so he didn't open the door and they couldn't get into the house. We went to swimming practice. My dad, he texted his therapist and like to say he was gonna commit suicide. The therapist tried telling my mom, but like, because it's so loud, you can't hear anything. So we were just coming home as normal. After an hour, we were just a little over an hour not in the house, and we were coming home, and then uh, police was waiting here already. There are three or two police officers in front of our house. And like, this wasn't the first time he had tried to commit suicide. So I thought, okay, it's gonna keep doing this again. It's gonna be fine. I knew immediately what was going on um, when I saw the uh, door closed, the door which is usually never closed. And he had put the life insurance policy in front of the closed door. But when I went in his room, his face was pale and purple. I'm like, this is a little bit more serious. I first thought it's, um, we can save him because we could save him the last time, uh, but it was not the case. The police officers told me to stay in my room for quite a long time until my mom came rushing in the room saying he died. So like, I was crying for almost the whole night, but yeah, so. After it happened, I, I first thought, um, I mean, of course, we were to com under complete shock, uh, but I did notice she, uh, she wasn't really able to talk about it. Um, she was a little bit more agitated, um, that kind of things. Um, but there was no really opening. There was no, she was kind of stuck. I think she just didn't know how to handle it. I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it because nobody had experienced. I was like, is this how it always is? You really don't have anybody to talk to. You just go through it. It was about two months after my husband's passing that the school counselor literally came running after me and said, I have something, I have something. And then she gave me the leaflet of, um, about the Camp El Tiso, the grief camp. And I saw directly, that's it. Campfire Camp El Tiso de la Vida is for children who have experienced a loss. We provide the children with the additional component of grief therapy. So a child might go to canoeing and horseback and group therapy as their activities. 
I was nervous, but I was still excited because like once I got to camp, like I noticed everybody was nice. I think the camp environment provides us with a great therapeutic opportunity. Uh, when a child comes to see us in a private practice setting, um, they might see us one hour, uh, one time per week, and it takes a long time to build up the trust and comfort to make progress. Um, the camp environment, they're, they're immersed, um, so they, they're able to build a level of comfort um, that provides us with a lot of opportunity to do really good work. And children who have experienced a loss um, often feel very isolated. They might feel like they're the only child in their class who doesn't have a father. Um, so when we gather them together in groups like this, they, they feel a closeness with their other cabin mates. When I went to camp, I felt like I can actually talk now. I could actually tell what happened and people would understand. When I then saw her, I I was blown away. I was blo literally blown away. Yeah, so I really thought I'm having a different child back. Uh, she was confident talk to talk about it, not only with me, but also I had the feeling with friends. The camp was just, it was a blessing. What for me is most important is that I have, I have the feeling she has now knowledge and a set of tools that she can help herself. Oftentimes with the loss of a parent, there are significant lifestyle changes. Um, in the case of a prolonged illness or the loss of a wage earner, um, there are gonna be significant financial strain. So we find that a lot of our children uh, need some sort of scholarship to be able to come to camp. I wish you could see the impact you have in these children's lives. It's incredible the amount of improvement they can make, um, and it wouldn't be possible without your help. I think, so this, this camp, it was, it gave my daughter the kickstart in her healing process, and I honestly, I, I don't even want to think about it if she wouldn't have had the opportunity to go there. I'm just thankful for everybody who is supporting this.